So Blender has had this white noise texture for quite some time, and I'm pretty sure that most of you don't know what it's for, because if you just put in a texture coordinate like this and render the white noise, it just gives you something like this. And if you lower the samples like 4, you get some grains like this, but the grains kind of go away if you increase the quality of your render, let's say to 56, like that. And uh, if you hit F12 to render the white noise, and if you click on here and see the numbers down there, all the numbers RGB are very close to 0 0.5. So as you can see, the more you increase the render samples, the more it's going to progress to 0 0.5. So at this point, you're probably wondering, what, what's the deal here? What's the purpose of the white noise? It's kind of a waste of time for the developers to implement something like this, right? They should have focused their time on some other things. Instead, they implemented this useless white noise texture, right? But what if I told you, no, it's not useless. It's not a waste of time for the developers to implement this white noise texture. And after watching this video, it's going to be your favorite texture. So. The white noise texture is confusing because 1 is not a texture, 2 is not a noise, and 3 it's certainly not white. Because uh, when you render you get 0 0.5, right? 0 0.5 is basically just a neutral gray and not white. So anyway, the very nature of this white noise texture is just a random number generator, right? You can think of it as a random number generator. Now the thing about computer is that it can't really generate a random number, right? In order to get a random number, you need to give it something to turn that into a random number. And we call that something the seed. It's like a meat grinder, right? In order to get a meat paste, you need to put in a piece of meat and it's going to grind the meat into meat paste, right? And the random number generator is uh, very similar in this fashion. You need to give it a seed and it's going to grind that seed into a a random number. And at the heart of a random number generator is a hash function. Now you don't need to know what a hash function really is, you just need to know one key characteristic of a hash function is that even if you change the, the seed by just a teeny teeny tiny bit, the output is going to be completely different. For example, I have a uh, MD5 hash generator here, and this is the uh, seed, it's just a bunch of A, and if if I hit generate, I get this MD5 hash here, which is a series of 32 random characters. And even if I just change one character within this sequence, let's say from A to B, and hit generate again, I get a completely different hash output. All right? Let me change this to C and C. So we get completely different output. The white noise texture in Blender works in a very similar fashion. So let me change this to 1D so that it's easier to see. Here we have 0 as the seed, and let's change to 1, we get a random output like that. And we change this to 2, we get a random output. And if we change this to 20, we also get a random output like that. However, let's change this back to 0, and change this to 0 0.0001. See, we get a completely different output again. So how much you change this value doesn't matter. As long as you change it, you get a randomized output. So how does something like this generate a grain like this? If you put in a generate uh, a texture coordinate. Now, the thing about the texture coordinate is that it's not consistent, right? You get a different uh, texture coordinate for different points. Let me just open Krita, and uh, here is a pixel. And if we set the the render sample to let's say four sample, right? Then each pixels will get four random sampling points. And because the texture coordinate change depend on where you render it, uh, these points will get different texture coordinate. Basically, these four points will get four different seeds. And when you feed four different seeds into the random number generator, you get four random values. 
For example, this is uh, 0 0.62, this one is 0 0.43, and this one four zero point seven six, and this one 0 0.25. Basically, you get four random values, but within a single pixel. And because it's a single pixel, it can't carry four different values. It, it needs to be combined to a uh, an average value. And the average value will be something close to 0 0.5. The more samples you render, the more closer it will be to 0 0.5. All right? And uh, the neighboring pixels will be pretty much the same cases. Here, another four sampling points, another four, like that. So each of these will get a number around 0 0.5. Let's say this one, 5, 1. This one is going to be 4.54. This one is going to be 0.47, so on and so forth. The more samples you render, the closer these numbers to 0 0.5. So now that you know how the white noise works, how do you come about using it? So let me just uh, turn off this collection and turn on this example. The uh, simplest way to use the white noise texture is to floor the texture coordinate. Basically this is the uh, UV and this is the floored UV. So this whole region to, will get the same seat and this whole region get the same seat and this whole region get the same seat. And when you feed these seats into the uh, white noise texture, you get different values for each of the seat and now you can call this the white noise because if you increase this to something really high you get some nice grains here and these grains do not depend on the samples for example I can increase this to 2000 and we still have the same grains and conveniently the white noise texture also give us the color which is a set of three random values. And when we combine the three random values, we get a color like that. Okay, this is just one simple way of using the white noise. There are many other cases when we can use the white noise. Basically, whenever you need a random number, you use the white noise, all right? For example, let's take a look at this. And let me turn on the floor. Okay, so all of these cubes use exactly the same material, which is the random color material. And in this material, I use the uh, random input of the object info node. This basically gives us a uh, random number for each of the object. And uh, I use this as the seat for a white noise. And I can also change this seat a bit to randomize the, diff the distribution of the random values. So basically, using this setup, I can generate a bunch of different colors for all these cubes. There we go. So imagine if you have like a city full of cars, right? And you want to have uh, different colors for the cars, and then you don't have to assign different materials for each of the cars, you can use this material to assign different colors to all the cars in the entire city. That's the power of the white noise texture. Now, this is a fairly complex use of the white noise, but you can get crazy with it. Okay, here is another example of using the white noise. All of these cubes use exactly the same shader, the random gift wrapped shader. And in this shader, I have this random gift wrap generator here. And in here, I use a bunch of white noise textures to control a bunch of parameters to generate all of these textures. And let me just go back out here, select all of these cubes, and Alt-D to duplicate. All right, and Alt-D duplicate again and again. So you see we have infinite variations for the, the boxes. There is no repeat whatsoever. And let me zoom in on this. The rotation of the flowers, as well as the number of petals and the colors, all are controlled by white noise textures. All right. And let me zoom out. As you can see, we have no repeat whatsoever. 
I mean, basically, if you look hard enough and you have enough samples, you will get some textures that look similar, for example, these two, because um, at the end of the day, the random numbers are random and sometimes it kind of generates similar values and um, yeah, it will result in somewhat similar textures. And let me go back to the shader editor and here I can randomize the, the master seat to completely change everything about the textures like that. And I can also change the color seats to change the colors of uh, the textures without changing the textures themselves. And here I can change the textures without changing the, the type of the texture like that. And uh, let me just go in here and show you the node graph. Here I have a uh, random per piece. And in here, basically, it's just it's just a white noise texture. And this will generate uh, a random number for every box. And I'm going to use this number to uh, mix the texture. I mean, I have four different texture types. And uh, this white noise texture is going to mix these four uh, texture type randomly. And within these textures, I also use a bunch of white noise textures to control the colors and as well as the rotation and the number of blades and stuff. So yeah, as you experiment with the white noise, you will quickly find yourself using quite a lot of white noise. And I'm sure it will become your favorite texture in no time. Okay, that is the power of the white noise. And uh, that's it for the video. I hope you learned something from this. And I also will be uploading this particular demo file on my Gumroad for just $1. So if you're interested in studying the white noise, please do consider buying this demo. And I'm pretty sure this, uh, this shader will also be quite useful for your project. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.